Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about building your first Windows Phone 8 application. To do that, the first thing we need to do is install the Windows Phone 8 developer tools. First, navigate to create.msdn.com, and from there you'll see a link to download the dev tools. When you click on this link, you'll be taken to a page to install the Windows Phone SDK 8.0. This version of the SDK supports Windows Phone 8 as well as Windows Phone 7.5 development. Even though the product is called just an SDK, it also includes all of the tools that you need in order to build and deploy your Windows Phone applications. This includes the Windows Phone emulator to allow you to test your app on a virtual phone device, and Visual Studio 2012 Express for Windows Phone, which is a stripped down version of Visual Studio that's focused primarily on Windows Phone development. You'll also note that to build Windows Phone 8 applications, you will need to be running uh, Windows 8, at least 8 or 8.1, if you'd like to solely develop Windows Phone 7 5 device, uh, applications, you can run that on Windows Phone 7. So here I'm running on Windows 8, and I've already downloaded and installed this SDK. One additional step when you're installing the SDK is it will ask you to register your copy of Visual Studio, and that will give you a serial number to run Visual Studio. This doesn't cost anything, they just want you to fill out an online registration form. Once you've installed the Windows Phone tools, you'll be able to launch Visual Studio 2012 Express for Windows Phone. This will look like normal Visual Studio 2012 if you used that environment before. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and say New Project. We can do that from the Start menu here, or we can say File, New Project. From here, you'll notice a little bit different in the templates that are installed. If, you, if you've got the Visual Studio Express version only for Windows Phone, you'll notice that the only templates that are available to us are those that are centered on Windows Phone development. Uh, that allows us to do Windows Phone development in C Sharp, Visual Basic, or C++, and C++ is focused on direct 3D applications. These would be uh, Windows Phone games that use the uh, DirectX engine, so something like an Xbox 360 title that's been ported to Windows Phone. You can also build these applications in Visual Basic. Today we're going to focus on building them in C Sharp. You'll see there's two options underneath the template section. One is for Windows Phone apps and one is for XNA Game Studio. If you're going to be building a Windows Phone game and you want to use the DirectX framework, you'll want to focus on the XNA Game Studio project options. Today we're going to be building a simple application and so we'll just go with the Windows Phone templates. And You'll see there's a bunch of options here and you've got a little preview on the right of what type of template will be spit out. We've got panoramas, pivots, uh, some integration with Direct3D, we have the option to build the application using HTML5. Uh, we've also got some audio streaming templates. The very basic is to just build a Windows Phone app, which will be our first choice. And it's a blank application with a very minimal amount of templating. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to call my application to do. And we're going to be building a simple to do app uh, in Windows Phone. You can go ahead and browse and pick some place to put it. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the default. I think that's fine. And then I'll go ahead and say, OK. And the first thing it's going to ask me is, what versions of the phone OS would I like to target? Would I like to target Windows Phone 8 or Windows Phone 7.1? This is an important decision here, mainly because the libraries have changed in Windows Phone 8 slightly. So there are some compilations, some breaking changes in between 8 and 7.1. You can't support both with a single compilation. Uh, 7.1 is a legacy product at this point. Uh, you are probably going to be focused on Windows Phone 8. That's certainly where most of the market share is. All of the new phones that you see coming out, the Nokia phones, the Lumias, those are all Windows Phone 8 based. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the default here of Windows Phone OS 8 and click OK. And Visual Studio now will be creating a basic template for my Windows Phone application that I've called to do. And you'll notice when this comes on screen, we've got a little split, split screen layout here. And uh, it's loading the designer. We've got a device toolbar on the left. And that allows us to kind of tweak which sort of device we're working with. Do we want to see the orientation as horizontal or vertical? I'm going to go ahead and uh, collapse or shrink this panel on the over so we don't need to look at the code right now, but we can see the design surface. And if we zoom this design surface here, you can see we've got our application and it's framed around a Windows phone device. So we can kind of get an idea of where the borders are at and how the phone will fit in. We can switch that orientation between horizontal or portrait. We can switch what the resolution of the phone that we want to target. Do we want to target a 768 by 1280, a 720 by 1280? And you can see when I change these, you can see the device screen space changes a bit. So this device goes down a little when I have more screen space available. 
Uh, we can switch our theme. Windows Phone supports two types of themes, dark versus light. You can see I can switch between the dark and light themes and see what my application will look like. There's accent colors that the phone supports, and I can change those. In our little example here, it doesn't change much, but if we were to go back to the start page on the phone, you'd see the difference. Uh, and you can even turn off the Chrome, what they call the Chrome here, which is the fake device. Uh, I like to keep it on because it gives you some reference points here. And then if we look over here on our Solution Explorer on the right, we can see that it created one c -sharp project called To-Do. That's what I named my application. Created a couple of subfolders. One is the Assets folder and then the Resources folder. Uh, and then it created a main page.xaml and an app.xaml. Now I chose to do this application in XAML as opposed to HTML5. Uh, that's what I'm familiar with. Uh, that's what I think most people coming from the WPF or Silverlight world is going to be familiar with. And it would be an easy transition if your skills are uh, already there in the XAML space. If you prefer, you can certainly write these applications in HTML5, but for this video, we'll focus on XAML. And the first thing we're going to look at is app.xaml. So again, if you're familiar with WPF uh, or Silverlight, uh, this, this concept should be similar to you. This is the main entry point of our application. When I look at app.xaml, you can see it's got a XAML snippet here. It's the application, and it's got some resources linked in, and uh, there's one specific lifetime object created for the phone shell. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, and then in our code behind here, just like you would see in a WPF application, there's a main constructor, which is the main entry point for our application. This is where the global unhandled exception handlers will be hooked. This is where the root initialized component happens. Uh, and here's some information that's put in the template for us around the debugger. And you have some hooks here that you can interact with when the application's been launched or activated, deactivated, or closing. So note that on a phone, it's a bit different than on the desktop. Someone could always just press the hardware back button on your phone and get out of your application or fast, what, the, what Windows Phone refers to as fast switching. So they can fast switch out and you, you want to be able to react to that in your application. These are all fairly advanced topics, so we'll cover these in a later set of videos. Uh, today we're just simply looking at the basic structure of the application. The next thing to notice is we have a main page.xaml. Again, this is going to be very similar to you if you're familiar with the WPF template. This is the exact same thing. You'll get an app.xaml as your entry point, and you'll get a main page XAML uh, as your first page. Well, now, when I open the designer for main page XAML, that's what we were looking at earlier with the phone Chrome. And you can see I can select on elements inside my design surface, and you've got a familiar designer just like you would have in, say, a WPF application. And I've got these screens split horizontally. Let me close a few panels here so we can see a little better. And um, let's actually split these vertically. This might be something you're familiar with. If you're familiar with WPF, you may see something split vertically like this. And your design surface is now below. And your code or XAML surface is up above. You can run these in split screen. You can collapse down and have tabs at the bottom to just run design on one tab, XAML on the other. This is the way I prefer to do it. I like to have a full screen design and a full screen XAML view. I'm very used to doing XAML from the WPF world, uh, and I like to be kind of in more control here with the XAML. Uh, but you could certainly just focus on the designer. You can drag and drop elements from your toolbox here on the left, um, and you can see all of the Windows Phone controls that are common. We can drag and drop, for instance, a button drop it on the form, and you can see now I have a button available to me. If I flip to the XAML, you'll see that the designer has now created this button for me and placed it with some margin and some alignment based on how I dragged it on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and delete that button for now, and we'll flip back to the design surface, and you'll notice that it got deleted. That's a basic architecture of the default template in Windows Phone. If we drop into the code behind, which is done by just expanding mainpage.xaml here in the Solution Explorer, and you'll see mainpage.xaml.cs. When we drop into the code behind, you'll see some commented out hooks for us uh, for the application bar and the default initialized component that's set up. So this is the basic architecture for our solution when we create a brand new blank Windows Phone application. And the next thing we want to do is just run our application and see what happens. We haven't put any code in here. We just want to see how the default application runs. The first thing you'll notice if you go up to the toolbar in Visual Studio, it's not just a play button like you might be used to. It's not just the debugger. There's some text next to it. It says emulator WVGA 512. And you'll notice there's a little drop down to the right. And if you click that, you're given some options as to which emulator you'd like to launch. 
uh, and you also have an option to debug directly on a device. I think for most people when they're getting started, they're going to be debugging in the emulator. It's a very capable emulator, probably better than the other two major platforms that are out there in their emulators, uh, very comparable to the iPhone emulator. And uh, you may not have uh, the device that you want to test on. You certainly won't, uh, most likely won't have multiple devices at different resolutions. So it's very helpful to be able to choose different emulators. Uh, I'm going to stick with the 512 WVGA and I'm going to go ahead and press play. And what you'll notice is that what comes up over the top of my screen here looks like a Windows phone. It's a virtual Windows phone and it's the Windows phone emulator. That's what happens when you run your Windows phone application. You'll notice that it boots up here and we get a normal Windows phone application screen. This is just like it would be on your phone. There's a couple things to note here. The emulator itself, and we see it's loading our app right now, the emulator itself runs as a virtual machine. Uh, so it is the full Windows Phone OS. Uh, it's not faked in any way. Uh, it is running the normal Windows Phone operating system that your physical device would run as well. It's one of the reasons why this, um, this emulator is so good compared to some of the other ones that are out there for the other platforms. You'll notice on the right side, uh, we have a little toolbar for our emulator, a little tool strip that gives us some options. Uh, I can grab this emulator and move it around just like a normal phone. The first two options are to rotate the phone. So I can rotate this into landscape view or use the option below to rotate it back to portrait. Um, there's some other options for zooming in and zooming out. And you'll see a little, uh, little chevron at the bottom that you can pop out. And when you click that to pop it out, it gives you some options for the additional tools that are available to you. Uh, that it can be triggering the accelerometer, setting a GPS location. It defaults to the Seattle area. That's where Microsoft's at. So um, you can also take a screenshot and you can emulate some of the network settings. So you can operate as if it was on 3G or 4G, something like that. So we'll go ahead and close that. And you notice our application is running. It says my application, there's a page name. We can press the hardware back button on the emulator and we get back to a normal Windows Phone operating system. We can scroll up and down, we could launch other apps, we can flick to the side here to get to the full apps panel. And so you can interact with the phone just as you would on a physical device and see how your app responds. Now, if one thing to note here, we've pressed back. Now the question is, how do we get into our application? There's, uh, our application is installed on this phone and we can get back into it by flicking over to the left you drag the mouse, click and drag the mouse to the left, and you get a list of all your applications. You can scroll all the way down. You'll see one with the default icon here called To Do. If we click that, then we get right back into our application. So that's the basics of building your very first Windows Phone application. We didn't do any code here. I just wanted to walk you through the structure of the application, how to run the emulator, what your options are with the emulator. And you'll note that when I close the emulator down, it goes back to Visual Studio and our debugger stopped. Another option here, if we just go ahead and press play again, and we'll launch the emulator. Since the emulator does take a few seconds to boot up each time, it is booting the Windows OS inside this virtual machine. It takes a bit of resources on your machine and it takes a little bit of time. It's ideal to not shut the emulator each time. Since this runs as a separate application, the emulator does that you can leave that running and from inside Visual Studio, it can launch your application within that existing emulator. So you can leave this emulator open. Don't press the close button here. Just come back into Visual Studio, press the stop button and you'll see that it's stopped. And if I go back to my emulator, I just alt tab back. You can see my emulator is still running. It's still, it's back to the home screen. I can go in and say, launch the photos, for instance, just like I would in a normal phone. Now I don't have to wait for it to boot up again. If I press play this time, it knows that there's an emulator already running and it jumps right back into our application. So that's much faster. So that's it for the Windows Phone tutorial here. We'll just walk you through the basics of getting started and getting the tools installed and running your first application in the emulator.